Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. We are continuing with the series of what the wrist does at contact point on the surf. Today's topic is the slice surf. So I'm going to record the slice surf at 240 frames per second. I'll be just using my iPad Pro and the on-form app to scrub back and forth and then we can discuss and what's really going on. So I will record the surf from different angles and hopefully that's going to clear up your mental image of what really goes on with the wrist when we're hitting a slice surf. All right, let's start with the slice surf from the back view. So here's a normal speed uh, one slice surf. So the reason why I'm showing you for slice surf from this angle is just to show you how I served it. So it's a, it's a good slice serve. It doesn't curve the most in the world. And also you have to know that if this was a hard court, then the ball would have curved a bit more because it would skid, but clay court grips the ball a bit more. There's more friction and slice is then not so pronounced or the curve, right? So what I want to show you is how my slice serve looks like from this angle, because in the future clips, I'll be showing you slicers from the side and also from the front and you will not see where the ball goes. So what I want you to know is that I was serving, I was recording the clips uh, until I made a good slice serve. So even when you're looking at me from the side and I'll be showing you a slice serve, that's the one that went in. So if I missed it, I repeat it. So all the slice serves that you will see now in the from other angles uh, they went in something like this. So just that you have a picture of how my slice serve looks like. All right, in this comparison, we're looking at the slice serve versus the flat serve. So hopefully you can see immediately which one is which. So on the left is slice, on the right is flat, and they're synchronized. So if we rewind now a little bit and we see how I'm coming up to the ball and what's going on, you can see that there's very little difference here. So the main difference is just that on the slice side, when I'm hitting the slice serve, the racket is not going to completely come on the back side of the ball. So when I make contact, the racket will be at a slight angle. And when I'm hitting the ball flat, the racket basically comes flat on the back side of the ball. And that's all that needs to happen for the ball to behave differently. So one or one of the main conditions, the other one is just like a little bit of where am I pushing the ball? Because I, I could be hitting the ball from this contact point also flat outward. So in this case, I'm hitting more down the middle, but I could be hitting the ball flat more outwards. And in that case, I would come a bit more on the side of the ball. Look, I would come a bit more from this side of the ball and push the ball a bit more in that direction. But these are all very, very small changes, very small differences. So if we continue here, then you can see that the path of the racket becomes very similar after contact. So at about this stage, it's basically very little separating the follow through. So the pronation continues in the same way as it does on the flat serve. So I'll give you a link. I had one short video I made at some point explaining what really happens with contact and pronation. So I will link it for you. But here it's also kind of visually very clear how little difference there is between a slice serve and a flat serve. So ju just basically slight racket angle and maybe a little bit more. So the racket goes a little bit more in that direction longer. On the flat serve, it goes longer in straight direction since I'm hitting there. So I'll show you like this that you see more clearly. So if I put the racket at contact, I put the box so the racket is here. And if I go a few frames, just a few frames, because later they will quickly catch up. So here you can see that the racket moved a bit more to the right with a slice serve. So it moved a bit more to the right and the flat serve went a bit more straight forward. So again, what is strange to players is that the racket moves to the right and hitting the ball left. So that's tennis, guys. What can I tell you? It's a complex 
and very interesting sport. Okay, let's take a look at the flat versus slice serve. So I'm showing you now a comparison immediately because that's what uh, will be the most obvious difference and something that kind of shows you what is a slice serve. So on the left, we have a slice serve and on the right, we have a flat serve. So this is the contact point and you can see how little difference there is in the racket angle. So the racket is angled just a few degrees away from the ball. This one, obviously, you see on this side is coming on the flat side, is coming really flat on the ball. So uh, from the back view is coming really flat on the ball. And on the left side, on the slice serve, there's a bit of an angle. So even to me, it's, I know what's going on and I've watched videos many times, but even to me, it's surprising how little angle there is, right, in reality. So to me, when I serve the ball, I feel that I'm coming more to the side of the ball than what actually happens. So let me know in the comments below if this is maybe surprising to you too, or were you aware that there's such a little difference in degrees in contact point? between flat and slice serve. So that's all that it takes. And again, remember I showed you in the first clip how my slice serve went. So this is a slice serve that goes in the court. So it's I'm serving out wide and flat serves are served down the tee. And so this small difference creates all that big difference on the other side. So the, the difference in where the ball ends on the court is about four meters. That's half of the single squirt. And this difference is created here. So if I continue a bit further with the racket, you can see that there is also almost no difference in, in the pronation in the follow through. So here's another side view comparison on the left side, slice serve on the right side, flat serve. So you can see how small the difference is in the contact point or the racket angle. I promise you guys the serve on the left was a slice serve and it went how I showed you in the beginning. It takes just small racket angle degree change to make the ball fly four meters in other direction than a flat serve and also have a side spin. So you can see that if I continue the movement, basically no difference in the pronation in the follow through. So that's basically all that it takes here the difference in the contact point so even you know, I zoom in you can see there's a little difference in how the racket comes at the ball here is really at the back flat on the ball and on this picture on the left side you can see a bit more of the strings and that means the racket is slightly angled so that's all it took to hit a slice serve and not a flat serve And from the front view, if we start at contact point, both serves are synchronized on the left side, obviously slice serve on the right side, flat serve. So you can see the slight difference in the racket angle on the slice serve, just slightly more angled to the side of the ball and on the flat serve more in the back of the ball. So that's the difference. So if I run the swing up to the ball, basically no real visible difference, very, very minute details cannot be uh, seen with the naked eye at full speed. So just slight difference. So basically here you can see that since I'm going into a flat serve, the racket has to start opening slightly earlier than here. You can see that difference in angles. We don't control that consciously. It's happening too quick. So let's say just from here that you're aware maybe of the time. So from there until contact is three hundredths of a second. So there's no way you can control consciously this difference in racket angles when you're approaching the ball. So we don't do that consciously. You just all you focus is how you're going to come on the ball that you're picturing more on the side. You don't know how much more to the side. It's basically trial and error until you see how the ball flies off. So when the ball flies off, you're going to see the result 
And if it goes too much to the left in the court, you're going to aim a bit more to the right. And through repetition, you're going to find these minute details of racket angle change that is necessary to, to achieve what you want. So to hit that wide angle. So that's a typical slice serve. Now, keep in mind, you can hit a slice serve down the tee also. So then if I'm serving this flat serve down the tee and I'm serving a slice serve down the tee also, then the difference would be even smaller. So like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I was serving flat serves down the tee and, and slice serves out wide so that, you know, that the difference is more obvious. So that's the difference at contact point. And if we continue a bit after contact, you can see that the racket moves very similar. Again, even though we were approaching the ball more on this edge, this edge does not come around. So there's no such thing as peel the ball or something like that. That is a common instruction. We don't peel the ball. So the pronation happens exactly the same way, whether we're hitting a flat or a slice serve. Okay, and just in case someone asks, okay, can you do a comparison between a slice and a topspin serve? Yes, I can do. So I'll do it from this angle, from other angles. It's not going to be so obvious when I record from side angle, but from this back angle might be much more obvious. So basically what is the most important thing to notice is, of course, the difference in the contact point. So if I make a line from the ball like this down, then you can see it's quite a big difference in where the ball in space is in relation to me, right? So here's the ball. So in relation to me, if I show you one more line, or let's say my head and the back, so somewhere here is like my neck, then you can see that the ball is, this ball is much, uh, much differently placed in space in terms of how much to the side it is. So basically roughly as much as is to the side in this direction, that's how much it is in this direction. Uh, so depending how uh, flexible you are in your back and how much you can twist, that's how much different the toss is. So that's one very important key difference. I recorded a video not long ago on where the top spin serve is basically possible. So I will link that one that you understand that where I'm hitting the ball on the slice serve. So in this area on the right side of the body, top spin is not possible because the racket is not moving upwards anymore. So you have to toss the ball on the left side. So from this view, from this point of view on the left side of the green line in order to apply top spin. So that's one main condition. And then basically the second main condition is that the racket must not be fully extended yet at contact because then again, you have no more upward vector. So it has to be angled. That means that you're hitting the ball at a slightly lower contact point. So these are the key differences in how we approach the ball. But if I, if I continue with the, with the movement after contact, you will see that soon the follow through a bit later on looks quite similar is just the direction of where it's going. So obviously on a top spin serve, it's going to go longer in that direction. And here it's going to turn sooner. So you can see that that's the main difference. But again, just be aware of the, the main difference is contact point And of course, how we're coming to the ball. So this one will apply top spin on the ball and this one will apply slice. So I think it's pretty clear what goes on here. We have to stay longer sideways on top spin serve because if we over rotate, we're approaching the ball and we start, we're approaching the ball for top spin and we start rotating the body too quickly. We're going to come on the side of the ball and then we're going to hit more of a slice serve. So in order to apply top spin on the ball, we must stay in this line, not rotate too much. So you can see a little bit, if you watch carefully, if you look at my body shoulders, if I go a bit back and forth, 
you will see that here I'm starting to rotate already forward and here I'm a bit more sideways in this axis, staying a bit longer. So I don't want to ruin my swing path across the ball, so I'm staying a bit longer and eventually I'm gonna catch up. So by this point, you see, it's very similar. And here's an interesting uh, video analysis. It's an overlay of flat and slice serves that I can do in this. If someone's interested, I'm using an on-form video analysis app. Uh, Google it. I'll give you also a link in the description. So it gives me an ability to overlay two clips. So right now I've kind of synchronized them. I've, I've synchronized them on the ball. That's why you see I'm a bit out of picture. Um, I'll later show you also if I kind of align my body. So right now I just aligned everything on the balls because I just want you to see that basically the path up to the ra to the ball, so racket path up, slice and, and flat serves are basically identical. And here after the contact, there is very small difference, right? So not, you're not able to see that with the naked eye when you're watching your server or only occasionally, very difficult to see, you must have a very good eye. So that's why we can disguise these types of serves. We can hit them basically from the same contact point. So if I change a little bit and try to align myself, so I didn't exactly toss the ball in the same spot, but um, those are the subtle differences. So maybe that's the only difference sometimes if the server is not tossing the ball in the same spot. And you can see maybe this slight difference in where the ball is positioned. And you can assume that when you see the ball slightly more to the right, that's going to be a slice serve. So you can see that the balls then fly relatively different. Like this was not going really down the tee, but it's still about three meters between the, where the balls landed on the court. And these three meters difference of where the ball ends in the court is basically here in the contact point basically almost impossible to see so tennis is challenging demanding sport a lot of things happen with very small angles in very small, short amount of time and yet that can make a big difference in where the ball flies